Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of The Magic Hour. I'm Jamie Mendez, spiritual intuitive and oracle as well as a spiritual communicator. And today I have a very special, um, interesting uh, session today. Uh, this is Magical Me, for those of you who are new to my page, and every other Sunday or so I like to um, bring forth a topic of discussion, um, which I dub as The Magic Hour, so we are here for only an hour live, um, however the replay will always be available for catching back on my page. Um, but every sun, every other Sunday, or as long as I am able, um, I like to bring on special guests to discuss different uh, spiritual topics and things that are beneficial to the collective, um, bringing a little bit more awareness and insight. So uh, as soon as my beautiful partner in light pops in today, um, I will be, be joined, I should say, by Karen Christie, who is one of my soul sisters and partners of Oracles of the Light. Karen is also the owner of Luna Light Frequencies. So she will be joining me today and we are going to be discussing the power of sound healing. So not only are we going to be discussing, discussing that, but towards the end of the session, I will be doing a live light transmission to assist on this magical, powerful day of 11, 11, 11. And most of you have been following my page, so you are aware that today is a very uh, incredible energetic portal or energetic gateway which is, um, we'll talk a little bit about in more in a second. Um, I see that Karen just popped in, so welcome Karen. Hi, Meredith and Edward, Liz, MJ. Oh, thank you, how are you? Um, I'm actually on headphones today, so uh, that could be what's going on. It might sound a little clearer because I'm on the headphones, so um, other than I do have a little post-nasal drip going on, I talked a little bit about that the other day, so um, you know, just bear with me with that. But hi, Courtney, how are you? Hi, Carla. Donna, welcome. Hello, everybody. It's good to have you here. So let me go on and see if I can pull Karen in now. So bear with me for one moment, okay? Hi, Jason. Welcome. All right, Karen, you should receive an invitation now. Hi. Hi, welcome. Thanks How for being here. Can, good. Can you hear everything okay? I can hear good. Can you hear me? I can. And I'm going to ask everybody else to, um, other than the raspiness that I have going on with my voice, um, can everybody hear the sound quality okay today for both myself and for Karen? Hi, Jillian. Hi, Laura. And Karen, are you able to see comments or no? I can't see any comments okay. with the way my phone is. Okay. Yeah, so if you can let me know okay. if anything comes up. Courtney and everybody are just saying hi. Hi, guys. It's so good to see you, kind of. <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> um, okay, thank you so much for that, everybody. Hi, Lynette. Welcome. Roxana. Hello, oh, everybody. Ooh, look at that, 11 viewers. Lindsay. Mm. Welcome. Oh, good. Thank you, Jillian. Yes, yeah, so bear with me because I do have the post-nasal drip still happening. You know, we talked about mucus. It was a wonderful topic on Moon Day. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> has to do with, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I probably should shed a little bit of light on that. Um, so uh, I read something the day before or so um, of last Monday's Moon Day Oracle message. And it stood out in my head. And I didn't think about it afterwards, and really, I didn't even get to discuss it. Um, so it, I shared the, the article, like, right when I had seen it. Um, but when I was trying to do the Moon Day reading, I all of a sudden started getting overwhelmed out of nowhere with, um, like, a post-nasal drip, and it started kind of choking me during, and it was funny because I'm a medical intuitive, or um, also very empathic and energy sensitive. So I tend to pick up um, through feeling what spirit wants me to say or what spirit's showing me or what I'm receiving. Um, so it comes in through, you know, the physical, through my body. And um, it, 
that was when I wasn't getting the message, you know? So it wasn't until um, I got the message that I remembered that I had read something that said um, that we will be going with this 111111 gateway that we are now in, um, that we would be going through some releasing of lower densities. And how that would probably or more than likely occur um, was through it coming up and out um, for most of us. And um, so a lot of people might be experiencing some sort of congestion or even mucus release because mucus was said to be the carrier of those densities. So in order to expel the densities, the mucus had to come up and out. Um, so very lovely topic, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's real. So, all right. So hi, Rodney <laughs> and Leah, Freddie. Welcome. Hi, Did I everyone. Miss anybody else? I don't think I miss anybody else. And thank you for all the feedback, everybody. Oh, Donna says that she came down with a nasty head cold yesterday. Yeah. Oh. I think, um, and today, you know, it obviously is um, a very powerful energy gateway. And in layman terms, what that really just means is there is literally, it's, it's, it's well, first of all, the number or the, the, the vibration and the power of numbers is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will start to notice that they start seeing repetitious number patterns um, and everybody kind of chalks that up to being just a spirit message or an angel message. And sometimes it is, but sometimes it's also um, kind of like an activation point or an activation code that when you see it, um, it is like just stop for a moment and be aware because you are receiving some sort of um, light uh, code, download, upgrade. It's different for every single one of us, so I couldn't say here or there what exactly it would have been for you at the time you saw it. And sometimes it is a message. So really it's about using your intuition. Um, but just be aware when you do see them. So today is November, which is the month of 11. Uh, today is the actual 11th. And then the year 2018 breaks down when you add up those numbers two and 11. I know a lot of people refer to this as the year of nine because they just add the 18, but that's not accurate. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to say that. I shouldn't say that. Some people receive what they receive for, for a good reason, but it doesn't resonate with me is what I should say. So I won't say it's not accurate because sometimes it does make sense for whatever reason. Um, but the way that I see it, and um, a lot of the people who I resonate with, um, spiritual teachers, guides that receive light code transmissions, um, they, they also receive the same, that this is the year of an 11. So that's where that third 11 comes in. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, it is 11, 11, 11. So the number is powerful. So that means it's literally, what is a number 11 on its own? If you follow me on uh, Magical Me, you're familiar with the number talk, and sometimes I, or if you've ever had a reading with me, I will talk about numbers. Um, and to me, 11 always looks like two pillars of a doorway to me. I don't know if anybody else has ever seen that. And yesterday, for the first time I ever heard a confirmation, someone else said the same exact thing when they, um, you know, some uh, spiritual teacher actually shared it. Um, it looks like a doorway. And so it is literally about, um, first of all, it's the most intuitive number that there is, which means it's all about connecting to a higher consciousness. Hi, Julie, Tracy, and Lauren. Welcome. We just got started. Um, so I'm here with Karen today, as you see, and we are going to be talking all about sound healing. Um, and I will be doing a light transmission for healing for the assistance with today's gateway energies um, at, towards the end. Um, so Really, this is like um, when you have that most intuitive number, it's about connecting with the intuitive, but also the divinity and a higher consciousness. It's about like those epiphany moments and that awakening, illumination. Um, and it really is about like the doorway opening. Now, times that by three and you have like a whammy also because one, the number one is the number of positive forward movement. Also, it's the number of um manifestation and manifesting so today is all about like instant manifesting so really be mindful if you haven't already been um about the thoughts that you are um you know have running through your head about what you're doing what you're saying um and what you're looking toward instead of looking at the lack of be looking towards the positive what you wish to create um so it is this doorway that's the best way that i can put it in layman's terms it's like an energetic portal that's opening and flooding the planet and mm -hmm. our collective consciousness with activation codes um, that are assisting in raising our consciousness. 
and the frequency of the planet. So when that happens, in order to do that, there has to be this separation of the lower density. Um, and I don't want to get too carried away to confuse people because this is really like a class. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, but it's like separating the lower and the heavy and the outdated from the higher to help raise us. The point is not to be only in the higher realms, but the point is actually to bring us up into balance, if you will. So it's kind of like the higher is coming up to separate the lower, but at the same time, we're kind of, we're coming into a balance. And a lot of that has to do with the releasing of the outdated patriarchal ways that, um, and consciousness that we have had um, on the planet for the last, um, if not thousands of years. Um, so it's really bringing in a merging and a balancing or harmonizing, I just heard, harmonizing of the polarities of the feminine and the masculine. Um, so neither is better than the other. It's just about bringing in a balance and helping that within both, of, helping that within us as well as within the earth itself. Okay. Hi, Val. Thank you, sweetheart. Bella says you're both beautiful and I love you. So oh, I love you. I mean, you're beautiful too, sweetheart. My beautiful daughter. Hi, Jerry. Welcome. So yes, we're going to kick it off. We're talking about this powerful uh, transformation that we are, or portal, that we literally are walking through today energetically. Um, so you heard me, some of you saw my post maybe this morning. I talked about um, how I received a message out of the blue um, that we were really to be working with um, some crystals to keep our energy grounded. Um, I myself began experiencing really weird pain um, in my lower back area and kind of even in the front. I know a lot of people I talk to are experiencing very similar things. Um, and it's because we were releasing those lower densities. Our physical um, centers, the more the chakras that control more of the physical centers um, or the lower half, I guess should say, um, is really from the heart, is below the heart chakra down. So those are really where you're going to have those lower um, densities be cleared out, but it's not limited to because we, every chakra could, um, has like a physical attribute to it, but also we have maybe some lower things going on or um, thought forms in some of our other chakras connected to as well. So it's not limited to, so you might be experiencing different things. I know some people said that they were experiencing um, heart palpitations, um, interrupted sleep, energy headaches. Um, so there is a lot happening. So today the message really was to ground out your energy. Uh, this portal might continue into the next few days or so, or even maybe lead up until the 22nd. Um, so if that those uh, symptoms continue. Continue to ground out your energy by literally just kind of taking some deep breaths in and out and pulling the breath, pushing it out of your root chakra, out of your feet, and out into your even earth star chakra, which is below your feet and kind of is already in the earth itself. And pushing that energy out to mother earth and help it to ask her to transmute it um, and take it away. So any excess energy or any pain that you're having, um, it just really kind of brings an awareness to where there's some blockage. And that's where you can feel. Interestingly enough, a lot of people said that they were experiencing the, the pain um, on their left sides. Now, left is our receiving side, except for the brain. The left brain is uh, is the masculine, um, and the right brain is the feminine. Um, but the it's opposite on your body it's so confusing um but it really is uh the left side is really receiving so a lot of us it's interesting we're receiving and it's like we're uh i heard that we were having resistance and that some of us were struggling to release um even if it wasn't a conscious thing it was just the resistance so how you can help with the resistance is through grounding your energy also to protect your lower chakras as those lower densities are removed, working with crystals that will um, help keep you protected. Um, and they are like black tourmaline, smoky quartz, um, hematite, red jasper, um, onyx, obsidian, any of those darker like black, brown, or red crystals because they all resonate with your lower chakras, okay? Hi, Jerry. Oh, Jerry says pain left hip all week. Yeah, that makes sense. I had pain in my lower back on and off all week. So it's you. And now listen, everybody, I'm not a doctor. 
I'm a metaphysical one. No, I'm not a doctor. Um, so I, I, I cannot sit here and, and spirit away all of your pains and aches. And I, and I, I would never want anybody to miss something that might be a heads, you know, you're getting a heads up that something needs to be dealt with. So after the next couple of days, if this doesn't go away, if your issues don't go away, um, definitely look into that then. Don't just spirited away, as I like to say. Um, always use common sense and get something checked out if you need to, okay? Hi, Robin. Welcome. All right, so with that said, we're going to take questions towards the end as well. Um, so hopefully we will have some time. We're going to move along um, as quickly but as gracefully as possible. So the reason that I have Karen here with me today is most of you know this, but some of you do not. Karen is a certified sound and vibration therapist. So welcome, Karen. And Thank you. Uh, for the people out there that have never heard of a sound and vibrational therapist before, would you want to tell a little bit about what that is and what you do? Sure. Um, so basically, I'm sure everyone has heard of holistic healing sessions. Um, it's kind of like using sound and vibration to heal your dis-ease that your body has going on. So um, I use tuning forks. Um, I have a couple, I could show you an example. This is an unweighted fork. Um, an unweighted fork uses the sound and the frequency over vibration, even though the vibration does affect the ear, but a weighted fork, you can actually feel the vibration on the physical body. So um, tuning forks use specific sound frequencies and vibration to create a chemical shift in your brain. Um, and it allows improved and proper brain function. Um, it brings the nervous system into balance and integrates the left and the right brain. Um, it, it enables you to heal trauma um, within seconds of hearing the frequencies and feeling the vibrations, your body goes into um, a state of relaxation and that is where healing can occur. So when you get out of your own way and you let your body relax, you can heal. Um, and like I said, I have all sorts of different forks that have all different frequencies and they do all different things. So. So that's uh, really powerful. I mean, it's really powerful. People, mm -hmm. don't, people don't realize just how incredibly, first of all, people don't realize that we actually use sound on a regular basis to heal ourselves intuitively without even knowing. So what is the first thing? And, and I'll, and I'll let you guys go to the comments too, because um, what, what is the first thing that um, most of you do when you, uh, you know, you, you have a stressful day, you know, besides come home and get in, you know, get in the tub, but, you know, does, does anybody else, uh, I know there's days where I feel like I just have to like dance it out and, you know, I'll just, so I'll put on the music and, you know, I'll be dancing around in my living room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bella can attest, um, you know, because it's just literally like I just need to like I gotta let it go. Yes, MJ, absolutely. Laura too. Both of them. MJ says I listen to music, and Laura says music is my therapy. Absolutely. Think about when you're sad. You know, I can go. I can relate to going back to like breakups in you know like my teenage years. And what's the first thing you want to do? But listen to every single sad song on the radio, right? So, and. That's interesting. Donna says a fan at night to or the drone of the motor and, and blaze. You know, that's that's the first time I've ever heard someone say something like that. But it is it. That's a legitimate thing. It really is. Yeah, the white noise. Yes. Think about mm -hmm. when um, newborn babies are colicky. Um, newborn babies, you know, a lot of parents have to either run the vacuum for them or put on like that white noise. Like you can buy CDs or do we, does anybody buy CDs anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying my age over here or what? Um, but you used to be able, at least when my kids were younger, you used to be able to buy like CDs of just like white noise and stuff for colicky babies. So Carla says, go outside and listen to nature. Yeah, see, listen, that's the key word. You all said, listen. So it really is about using our natural intuitive um, instincts to go to sound, to bring calming um you know sometimes people want to celebrate what do you do you want to have a party you want to get a dj you want to get music you want to dance so it's really sound affects our mood and that right. allows for healing like karen said when you can get out of your own way because on a physical level 
or in a, and even mostly on a mental level when we are in a mental state of just you know down and angry or frustrated you're preventing yourself from being able to heal either physically emotionally or mentally so using sound in those ways gets you calm enough for the healing to begin to occur and really quick i just want to add something when we're talking about that this goes back um very, very ancient times, even when cavemen, when they couldn't speak, like, what's the first thing you do when you like hit your knee or bang your elbow? You're like, ow, like that vibration actually starts to help relieve the pain and you instinctively do that. So there's just another example. Everybody does it. They just yeah, don't know what they're doing. Exactly. And well, and, and I mean, speaking of like going back, it's like, I mean, look at the ancient Egyptians you see mm -hmm. a lot of their statues or carvings or hieroglyphics. You see them holding something interesting in their hands. And I know you've, I know you've seen that because we've kind of been like, what are they holding? <laughs> uh, yes. you know, they're holding like their own version of like tuning forks. Um, and there's another tool, but I don't know the name of it, another instrument besides the this sistrum. One? The sistrum oh. is another one of them, which is like that rattle. It looks like the shape of an onk. Um, and that, that's, that's cool. incredibly powerful. Um, and I know a wonder, uh, a woman who actually brought back the, um, sistrum to our area, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, her name is Taya Love. I'm going to give a shout out because that's how I learned about the sistrum. Um, mm -hmm. and she was the belly dance instructor and she's in the Lehigh Valley area. Um, and she actually teaches classes working with that sistrum, which I, I still want to get around to doing, but. There's another tool that looks kind of like, and, and Jason's tuning in. I got to give a shout out to Jason of Pure Healing Energy Tools. Um, hey, Jason. Jason. He, he constructs these really cool instruments that are just, they're, they're so unique and different that they all have these different um, purposes. But the, um, the grounding rod that he made for us, or for you, um, that looks like what I have seen in some of the ancient Egyptians' um, hands and I and I don't know the name of it but I I know that it's actually um, when I looked up some of it it had something to do with the sound and, and using sound healing so interesting but I mean you go back to what like the ancient um, the Native American people they used drumming which is another form of sound um, mm -hmm. let's see I know I had written down quite a few different um, they, oh yeah the, the Hindu you know, the Hindu people and the ancient Indian culture um, and even the Buddhists were all about the sound of chanting and, you know, mantras. So, I mean, sound is incredibly powerful and it's been being used and no one really realizes that, but it's very different ways and different frequencies do different things. We're going to get into a little bit of that. Hi, Cynthia. Oh, no problem, sweetheart. We really just started maybe about 10, 15 minutes ago. So, so thank you for being here. And Jerry says, I use a rain stick. Wow, Jerry. Ooh, I've never I like I've heard those. of them, but I don't think I've ever seen them. So magical. Mm. I love them. They have Very such a good sound. So obviously different ways that sound can heal us is through, um, I guess really we should discuss how it heals and Karen touched a little bit on that, how it enters, you know, it's, it's, it really does affect your, um, your neurological system, um, through your brain neurons and your brain neurons really do communicate through, uh, like electricity, like an electric current, if you will. And so the different type of frequencies that they hear, um, communicate that to your brain, which then essentially, um, assists with, uh, stress relief. Uh, you want to talk a little bit more about the things that it, you know, has, has sound has been proven. Now this is science here, science mm -hmm. and metaphysical. You want to talk a little <clears throat> bit about the, um, you know, the scientific, the medical that it does, that it has been proven to heal. Yeah. Um, there's millions of dollars of research that has been done um, specifically with the Cephezio frequencies. That is um, the backbone of my practice. Um, I use the Cephezio frequencies for the nine chakras down from earth star all the way up to soul star. Um, these frequencies have been, they're, they're so ancient. The church supposedly hid them. So we couldn't, you know, we could heal ourselves and get a direct connection to God. This is what I've read. Um, but there was a lot of research done and it, 
it was able to, like I said, put you into that relaxed state. Um, it causes your, the, sorry, the frequencies cause your body to um, create nitric oxide in the brain. So, and that is an endorphin that actually automatically relaxes you. So we all know what endorphins do. They're like the good stuff for your body. So it basically that it starts with that. And then, I mean, most people fall asleep during sessions. So, I mean, get out of your own way, like, and then they're just gone. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so um, it, it actually changes your brain's chemistry. Um, it brings everything into balance. Um, your, your, um, your pulse rate goes down. Um, and then if you want to go to the metaphysical, it, it shifts your consciousness even. So, I mean, I'm just bouncing all over the place. There's just, I could go on about hours for yeah. hours and hours. I mean, I, I read some, I did, I have read some <laughs> articles, you know, uh, tuning forks and, and sound frequencies of you know, been something that's always been an interest of mine. Um, and I do utilize sound in my healing practice as well as energy healing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but some things that I have noticed, as well as some research I've done, even from um, like Jonathan Goldman, who is like the uh, tuning fork or sound, uh, he has a, an international group or something like that, I do believe. And founded an international sound group or something. Um, but I read a little mm -hmm. bit about it and it has been proven different forms of sound healing has been proven to assist and alleviate the negative side effects of chemotherapy. Um, mm -hmm. it has been, um, said to alleviate, um, pain in, you know, physical pain. Um, and I know that you have a fork specifically for physical pain. Um, mm -hmm. And that has to do with the frequency, right? It's yeah, the, the frequency, frequency and the vibration. Because it, it is a weighted fork. It looks like this one. And it, you touch down on the body and you feel the vibration and the vibration mixed with the frequency. Um, it just does amazing things. Like I actually worked on my mother when she was having, like she had a pulled back. She felt all better the next day. It was incredible. I was like, wait, I love yeah, hearing this yeah. story amazing mm -hmm. yes and i mean i've had clients where i i work with some tuning forks not like you but i utilize different forms of sound you know light language vocal toning um tuning vocals singing bowls um and i have noticed the clearing out of you know the sinuses um relief of pain some of my clients have have come back saying that you know they're um they broken bones, bones have healed in like miraculous time. Um, so just amazing yeah. things that have happened. Depression, you know, people mm -hmm. kind of kicking right up out of a depression. Um, so, I mean, it's really limitless. It's amazing. And for anybody who has never experienced um, uh, any sort of holistic healing, sound or even sound and energy together, I mean, it's just amazing, you know, so definitely something to think about. Um, it's yeah. And, um, just traumas of childhood even. I mean, we have stuff like physical stuff that have, has been bothering and affecting us hanging out in our energetic body, our bio field. So the frequency and vibration just like seems to, what is the word? It just makes it go away. It vaporizes almost kind of because you can't see it, but it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, and getting past all those layers, you know, you know, as well as I do, but in the work that we do, you know, we're working on layers and it's like the more that people come back, the more layers we're able to get through and access. And it's like these sounds and these vibrations are even going all the way up as far as people's light bodies and assisting yeah. with re, um, I have seen, um, like the, the, the template, like the, I don't even know if I'm going to say, how do I want to say the words? Um, people's light body templates, like your grid. Um, I've mm -hmm. seen that being cleared out and kind of realigned with sound. So, I mean, just incredibly powerful stuff, you know? Yes. Hi, Deborah. Welcome. Uh, Jerry says, Karen, what are your hours to set up an appointment? We're going <laughs> to, we're, <laughs> we're definitely going to talk about all I'm of that towards, towards the end. So don't let us forget. Okay. We're going to talk all about that at the end. Yes. Um, so I really wanted to go into a little bit too of, um, the different forms of sound healing. So people are aware of all the many things that they could obviously besides music. Um, so obviously tuning forks, because that is what Karen does and what Karen specializes in. Um, and Karen has an array of forks. She talked about the ancient Cephegio frequencies, which I mean, they go back to what, the P Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, they're based on the Pythagorean theorem, um, which is six, three, six, and nine. Um, but even before that, these frequencies, you know, they 
forever. And even um, my planetary ones are attuned to the planets, and which base. That's yeah, another they thing heal. I was going to point out, her planetary yeah. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> but they're attuned to the planets and each planet, I'm sure, I mean, the, the woman last week she, with the astrology, she knows what all the planets do. I mean, I could also go into that, but that would take forever. However, they each are, they each handle a different physical symptom within the body, like around that chakra area. So, I mean, you could probably figure it out if you thought about it. Because each planet is connected to, I mean, it's funny, like, I mean, I can attest to this. I've had sessions with Karen and we're sitting, excuse me, we're sitting there and I'm, I'm going to talk about my throat. So I just got a, like a tickle in my throat, right? I was about to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I kept having this block on my throat chakra and we could not figure out for the life of us what it was because we've been working on it. We buy do self work. She's working on me. Um, we couldn't figure out what it was. And all of a sudden, the, I, I don't know if we did it like simultaneously or one of us heard mercury. She worked on me with the mercury fork, which is connected to the throat chakra. And sure communication. enough, communication, sure mm -hmm. enough, the block was removed. So yes, it was really cool. I love the planetary force. They're my favorite. And I think hearing like the, the sun and the moon, they're like my favorite and interesting. Yeah, can, they're like, you guys the... can, hear it. can you hear this? Ooh, can you hear it? Yeah. The sun and the moon. Love the sun and Magical. the moon. Yes. It's all about balancing feminine and the masculine, of course, which is perfect for today. <clears throat> So another form um, is Tibetan or crystal singing bowls. So mm -hmm. um, crystal singing bowls are made out of quartz crystal, which is an amplifier. Um, and it's a master healer at the same time. And the different Tibetan singing bowls, they're the ones that are a little more like you. You guys have seen my Tibetan singing bowl. I think I've, I've worked with before. I think my other one is at our space, Karen, but I have my little one here. This is just a small one. Um, there are many different ones. Um, they are all supposedly connected to a different chakra. Um, the bigger ones, because um, I know there are some that are like really teeny tiny ones and not all of them are attuned, I think, to the chakra. So you do really got to look at what you're buying. Um, but this one is actually said to be crown chakra. Um, and most of them, you know, you see the really, <clears throat> really good ones have like the Sanskrit um, mantras for that specific uh, chakra that they're connected to or the purpose of the bowl. Um, and most of them will have even like uh, a Buddha or a different type of, um, cause there are many different Buddhas, not just Buddha himself um, in there. So. Nice. All right. And you know, you've heard it before where you, you play it and it really does get really loud. This is crown chakra. Mm. Um, so we call them stuff in right now. We're going to wait for that. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, really the vibrations and tones with the, um, the sound of the, the, the singing bowls, the crystal singing bowls, whether it's quartz or whether it's the Tibetan singing bowls, the sound actually is said to slow down. The vibration is said to slow down breathing and the brain waves and, um, heart rates producing a deep sense of calm and well being. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that that's the first thing that I'm always intuitively guided to use on a client in their session. And I use it through, um, you know, through their, like their bio field. So it's like naturally kind of calming them down, which is interesting considering on your end, that's like the equivalent to the, um, the own fork. Do you want to talk a little bit about the own fork? <clears throat> Okay, um, the own <coughs> fork is a weighted fork. Let's see if you guys can hear it. Can you hear it? We can. You can. Bring down my back. Okay. So the frequency is 136.1. Um, this is basically, you don't need trading to use this fork. This fork is good for meditation. Um, like I said before, um, it, when you listen to it, like I said, and this is, you can feel it really strong because it's weighted, but also you can hear it. Um, you can put it on different points of the body for meridians to relax. Um, it's good for meditation. It's good if you're just, you know, having like a bad day and you need to like, it's like uplifting. It takes you right down. It's grounding. So when you're like all scattered and, you know, you can't get your thoughts together, you take a few deep breaths, you listen to this, that's going to help you out. I have two of them. I don't know where my other one is, but like, I like to have them in both ears because it's just so much better. Yeah. But like I said, this is available to anybody, really. I mean, I, I would recommend this 
it's, I think everyone should have one. <laughs> well, Lindsay, our other partner of Oracles of the Light, um, her son actually, she has a, I believe a six-year-old, um, her six-year-old son is autistic and he actually um, suffers sometimes from uh, like waking up at all hours of the night and um, she can't get him back to sleep. Sometimes he is even, you know, crying and kind of having like, you know, a really like a fit in the middle of the night and it's hard to get him back down or hard to calm him down after that. Um, she can attest to having used the own forks on him before bed or even during an episode and it has like completely eliminated, um, it was able to calm him down or it eliminated him having um, one of those nights where he was waking up in the middle of the night. So even that in itself for anybody who, you know, you have children, you know, that you know, might be on the spectrum or might have a little bit more energy, it's not going to hurt them. Even if they don't, even if they're not on the spectrum, that helps as well, you know, with all of us. And I did miss a comment here. I think um, Tracy said very Oh, Karen, clear my Saturn. <laughs> Tracy said, clear my Saturn. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good session. <laughs> um, Jason talk about says, that. Yeah. Jason says, I've had, and it's not going to let me see the rest, but it says he's had many sessions with Karen um, and that she really pinpoints the trouble spots and he feels amazing afterwards. It won't allow me to see the rest of his comment, but yeah. Um, and Donna says, bowls are my absolute favorite and go-to. Yes, absolutely. Lindsay is sharing um, that she has used them on him. He loves them on his feet, which is, yeah, very, oh. and those are, the, you know, the points, you know, we have chakras on our feet down there. Um, and at the end of a session, I use the own fork on the, the feet to ground everybody because, you know, you're flying high at the end of a session. <laughs> I do my yeah. best. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't see the rest of her comment, unfortunately. I don't know why that does that it's not fair i can't see any mm, i'm, sorry, I'm sorry it's so weird um so another sound we'll, we'll keep moving along um is yogic chanting or mantras which most of you are familiar with you know we're calling it the own fork but that's because it is connected to that sound of the ohm which is said that the earth actually makes in outer space right yeah, um, it's the sound of the earth spinning in outer space. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. So Sorry, just that the, was most important. I don't know why I didn't say that. Because it was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, the OM. Um, and then there are mantras, which is chanting, um, uh, you know, different sounds like OM, NAMA. You know, there's different ones. I'm not going to even attempt it at this moment. Um, but, you know, putting them all together. Um, it really does because it's the vibration that you are creating and it's like you can't see it but it's like reverberating out into your bio field and it's it's you know going back in through when you do yoga chanting or mantras it's like the vocal toning where it's really um, healing from the inside out because it's coming from you so it's vibrating through you and out and then back in because you're hearing it again so to me those are some really powerful ways, simple ways that you don't have to spend money on anything that you could be doing that, you know? Because the vibration is just as important as the frequency. I mean, they go hand in hand. One's not more important than the other. That's right. And so. the different octaves that come with the different sounds you're making yes. are actually kind of like frequencies. So just differently. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Obviously, classical music was what I really wanted to talk about. So I'm going to read something here that I um, seen on the internet about classical music, and then I want to share my personal experience with it. So classical music has been shown to increase the rate of development of synaptic connections in young children's minds. It also helps fuel creativity and enhance joy in adults. Classical music can even help address physical ailments like high blood pressure and muscle tension. That's really interesting. I notice that every now and then um, when I'm driving, um, you know, mostly it's usually going to work or coming home from work. And I am skimming through the radio stations. I accidentally fall on a, like a classical station. And for some reason, I forget to change it again. <laughs> and I stay with it. And then it will be like five minutes ago by. I'm like, well, I know it's in the classical music, you know, and then I'll, I'll change it. But it's like a subconscious thing. But my personal experience with classical music, um, I was uh, a very young mother. So when I first had my son, um, I didn't know uh, nothing like I know now, obviously. Um, but 
he's 19 years old now. So when I first had him, um, you know, it's the first baby thing that everybody goes through. We really don't know what to do. You know, we're kind of learning as we go. Um, so he was uh, a little different than when I had my daughter a few years later. Because when I had my daughter, something intuitively told me to play classical music in her nursery when she slept that night. And she was a newborn baby. Um, and it was like religious and it put her to sleep. And we would play Beethoven, Mozart, Bach. Um, you know, we would play all of these for her over and over and over again. And it was like, it became ritual um, where she actually needed it to go to sleep. As wow. the two children <laughs> grew up, now they're both amazing and incredible children. And because I'm their mom, of course, I'm going to toot their horns. Um, but they are but both. They are. Thank you. They're incredibly amazing in their own individual ways. But what I did find interesting was that through school, my son had a harder time concentrating and really grasp, not grasping, but embracing the more academic and the artistic. He didn't explore himself. He, he did that in other ways creatively at home, but in school setting, he really didn't. But with my daughter, she embraced uh, academic, intellectually, um, her artistic nature just shown creatively. Um, and she was the one that was a little bit more of the um, outwardly, whereas my son is a little bit more of the inwardly creative, if that makes sense. So I find that really interesting. And I do have to say that I do think that it has something to do with the classical music. Um, my son was a little older, so he wasn't necessarily in the room. Um, he Was he exposed to it? Yeah, but not in the way that she was. So I, I just, I can't say enough about it. Um, actually, there was a study done. Um, <clears throat> with the vibration of classical music. So I forget who the, the, the scientist doing it was. Um, it was in Japan. Um, so they, they um, somehow froze the water. They put, they put a little bit of water in the freezer with classical music and the crystals that formed were perfect and beautiful and symmetrical. Then they put, and no offense to people that like rap music. I mean, I didn't do the study, but they used <laughs> rap music. <laughs> I know, sorry. They used rap music on the second one and the crystals were all warped. They had like no, no pattern. It was like all over the place. So it's just like the vibration of classical music creates beauty physically. So you can imagine what it does to the brain. Or what it does internally. Yeah. You know. I know. And that's and I'm not saying don't listen to rap. <laughs> but. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it's kind of common sense when you start to, um, become a little bit more aware, consciously aware of the things, you know, we start to become aware about what we're putting into our body, what we're exposing ourselves to. That's becoming more and more with the collective. A lot of people you don't have to be spiritual to do that. A lot of people are becoming more aware. It's also what you're putting into your body, not physically consuming, but your own thought patterns, your own words, you know, and what are you listening to? What are you watching? You know, I shifted off of watching news. I can't watch news. Um, shifted off of watching a lot of like drama TV and reality mm -hmm. TV. Can't watch. It's just, it's like an energetically heavy, if that's the word I'm going to look for. Um, and some rap music can be very derogatory. Not all. There's some rap music that's fantastic, um, but mm -hmm. some of it, I think that might be why some of it can be very derogatory. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what, who the artist was or anything. It was just, yeah. it was years ago. And yeah, and like, I mean, energy, all energy has a vibration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are a few comments. A lot of people are commenting that they love classical music. They play it. Uh, Robin listens to um, hers in Italian. Um, Jerry Ooh, plays fancy. it. Jerry plays it for her grandson. Uh, Carla Aww. said that um, it helps with her migraine sometimes. So that, that makes sense. That makes sense mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Cynthia says that she used to listen to it all the time. She should maybe get back to it. Absolutely. Never know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Lynette, Lynette loves it too. She listens to it. So, and Lynette says everything will shift. So that's, that's what we're working on here. So hopefully, yeah. yeah. Um, so some other forms of sound healing, um, drumming. That's my favorite. It's one of my favorites. I should say not my favorite, but one of my favorites. Um, so uh, dr drumming was actually used by many different cultures um, from the uh, ancient like 
druid shamans and the Native American shamans, um, drumming is very much a in a big part of shamanic practice. I'm actually working with drumming um, in the, uh, my spiral temple too this month, so that's really interesting. Um, Drumming is incredibly powerful, and I actually am guided to use drumming sometimes. Um, but really what drumming does is, first of all, the vibration alone is there you go again. You're creating the friction, vibration with the sound, um, but it's and it's reverberating out into the atmosphere, the auric fields, and whatnot. Um, what I use drumming for is to break up stagnant energy. Um, I use it to break up stagnant energy in my space. I use it to break up stagnant energy in some of my clients' biofields or auric fields. Um, and it helps to not only break up the stagnant energy, but sometimes when I'm working on a client, I will call, I'll be guided to call in White Eagle, who is an ascended master. And when he comes in, I see him moving around my client. You know, this is happening in my third eye. Um, I see him moving around my client, and he is bang in the drum and moving around with it and it's a rhythm um and also i use drumming to raise the vibration of a space raise the vibration of my own energy field i also use drumming to raise um the cone of power is what i like to say so when i'm working on um some sort of like, uh, if I'm doing like some sort of a ritual, like a full moon ritual for setting positive intentions or releasing or whatnot, I do like to bring in the drum to help to raise the cone of power, which heightens the, um, how do I want to word that? It kind of like, uh, creates the opening of that doorway, if you will, or parting almost the, uh, barrier, the veil, um, to actual assist in the work that I'm doing or whatever intentions I'm setting, if that makes sense. Um, but the reason why the drum was so important, um, and I actually learned this over the summer um, through a connection I made in Glastonbury, England. Actually, I was in Dartmoor at that point um, in the Wisman's Wood in the middle of this amazingly haunting, beautiful, druid fairy wood. Um, and as I sat there amongst the rocks, um, I heard this beating over and over like a heartbeat and it was getting louder and louder. Um, and I heard a voice say to me, um, move in time with the rhythm of the earth's heartbeat, not against it. Um, and so when I heard that, I began to become very aware of the connection of mother earth's heartbeat and how it kind of syncs up with us. When drums were created, I think in like the more shamanic, uh, like Native American, and maybe even some other civilizations, um, when they were created, it was actually to replicate the sound of the earth's heartbeat that they heard. So really powerful. Drums are very, very powerful. I can't say enough about I that. I agree. Mm -hmm. So um, the next one, and then I have one more after this, and we will move it along. Um, Vocal toning. You have all, um, well, most of you anyway, is, especially if you've had a session with me, you've heard the vocal toning that I do. Um, and you've heard it come out sometimes during my light transmissions that I'm guided to do kind of at the spur of the moment. Um, so vocal toning is very much like chanting and um, the, the mantras that people use uh, and where it works through the inside out. But the difference with vocal toning that I noticed, and this started happening on my own, like I never took a class for vocal toning. When the light language began to be activated in me um, and I began to do the light language and hear it coming out, um, the vocal toning took over at the same time. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that it was called vocal toning. I just kept hearing tuning. I'm, I'm tuning, like I'm tuning people's chakras or their energy field, like I'm tuning a guitar or an instrument. And that's really what it is, is, is kind of happening. But it is interesting where it's different from chanting or mantras is that it is in the sound of vowels. And so I can't, it, even if I wanted to try it, I couldn't make myself make a noise that wasn't the sound of a vowel. So it's ah, uh, a, ooh, you 
know, not in that, there's no repetition, there's no pattern, there's no system, and there's no training involved or needed. Anyone can vocal tone. And actually, if you feel yourself stressed out on the way home from work or on the way to work or on the way to a meeting, an appointment, picking up your kids from school, whatever it might be, to bring your energy down, just sit down in your car and just start doing just noises like that it actually you'll be amazed at what just starts happening it just it i don't know if you felt that but i just felt it all tingle right up here in my head so it is really about bringing sound in um it is helping to balance the mind body and spirit connection whether you realize it or not um mm -hmm. vocal toning has been used to uh clear out uh, negative energy, negative emotions, negative debris. It helps to relax us. When I use vocal toning, it's like the forefront for light language to come out. And so I have to tell you that I do feel like it first sets the stage by clearing out negative energy and raising vibration at the same time. For me, now this isn't everybody, it might be different for everybody, but for me, when I have, because I feel like everybody's experiences are unique to them and, and you know, personal, you have your own experiences with things. But during vocal toning, um, sometimes I hear, a, I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm actually doing it anymore. I feel like I'm listening to someone or something else doing it. Um, and sometimes it takes on this really higher sound that I don't even think I could possibly ever make. And it's like, I hear it over like a layer over mine. So I can hear mm -hmm. me, you know, right. You've heard, you've heard. It oh yeah. I hear like sometimes three voices coming out of Jamie. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. And Jonathan Goldman teaches this. He teaches, a, you know, vocal toting, but he, I've never heard three voices come out of him. <laughs> Just That's saying. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and I have to say that um, if you have a set of headphones before I do the light transmission, grab them. Um, because I have actually heard playback of me when I'm not using headphones um, and I'm not listening. I can't, the, the vocal toning sound goes in and out. And it's sometimes really hard to hear. But people have reported back that when they're listening on the headphones during the light line, or not during light language and during the vocal toning, they hear these different voices and they pick up even sometimes words and things that are coming through. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So um, if you have a set of headphones handy, grab them and plug them in. I'm already feeling something right here. Yeah, I told you That's when crazy. I did that, it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I just really wanted to add quickly yeah. something. Um, so... I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, frequency and vibration can also um, increase your immune system. Like it can, you know, make it stronger. And I know we're coming into like cold and flu season. So um, specifically the ohm. So, I mean, I'm not saying, oh, you need to come have a session with me because, you know, help your immune system, but you could do it yourself. You can sit there, relax, ground and chant ohm for a while. And that will release the nitric, the nitric oxide in your brain. It gets you in that relaxed state and it will help your immune system. So I think that's something everybody could use yeah, every day. It's a fantastic point for cold mm -hmm. and flu season, you know, what we're moving into. So absolutely. Yeah. Who doesn't Who can't use, use that? When can't you <laughs> use immunity booster, you know? Right. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously light language. So light language, you've all heard me talk about that. I did a light language transmission where I shared um, really in depth about what light language is. If you don't, if you never got to see that, um, go to my YouTube channel. Um, it is Jamie Mendez or Magical Me. Um, and you can scroll through the videos that are there to find my light language transmission. And I talk a lot about my personal experience with light language, how it began with me, um, and really in depth of what it is, because I don't want to waste too much more time. Um, but really it's, it's, it's sound healing, once again, coming out. It is also sacred geometry and light code coming out in the form of sound. Each person's mm -hmm. light language is said to be unique unto themselves. I actually um, heard something that I've never heard before. Um, a lot of people used to refer to this as the um, speaking in tongues. Um, I don't liken it to that because it kind of gives I think a different a different 
picture of what it is that I do. Um, so I don't really liken it to that, but I think it can be likened to that because some of our ancient languages like Hebrew and Sanskrit are said to be a form of light language that was brought here through our galactic ancestors. Um, yeah. So like I said, I don't want to get too deep into it, um, but it is powerful healing, removal of lower vibration, um, I actually use it to send in light code and activate any code that I may be holding that can activate and facilitate someone else's activation codes for whatever that might mean. Consciousness shift, healing, light activation, light language activation. I mean, it could be anything. It's unique all the time. So Mayan, I do call forth my higher self. Um, and it's my own personal language. However, um, I have heard some different dialects come through. It's not always the same. Um, and sometimes I can tell when there's an energy working through me, like Lady Venus, who is Sanat Kumara's twin flame, who does often work with me. The goddess Isis sometimes comes through during my sessions and works with me. Um, Lady Nada, who is a divine love and works on the seventh ray. Um, so she's all about universal, divine, unconditional love. And so it's really all divine love, healing, and light that's coming through. Um, and specifically today, what I'll be doing with all of you is to help to release the lower density so that we can bring you into balance for the rising of the um, consciousness to bring in that divine connection, if that makes sense. Um, and I do call forth the Holy Spirit. Okay. So before we get into that part of the segment, because um, I know we're running out of time, um, I would just want to really quick ask you, Karen, what are your thoughts on sound healing versus energy healing? Um, I feel like it's kind of the same thing <laughs> because sound is energy. Energy has a vibration. Um, I even, you know, sometimes will use some Reiki in, you know, my sessions and that's energy. So I feel, I feel it's all the same category. It's all ancient. It's all natural and it works. Yeah. And I think what the two of you have found, um, the two of you, the two of us <laughs> have found together, um, is that it seems like each of them are like a different component or mm -hmm. ingredient, if I, I guess if I could use it in that analogy, a different ingredient yes. that comes together to make the recipe. Um, so it's kind of like light, sound, vibration, you know, mm -hmm. or, or energy, if you will. Um, yes. So, you know, I personally... When I began, um, you know, doing Reiki and, and treating clients with Reiki um, and even went on to become a Reiki teacher, um, I was not guided for my personal sessions to just stop there with Reiki. Um, I began to be shown things intuitively, which now has turned into my Aurora light healing. Um, so I, it is a culmination of vibration, the sound, energy, and light. Um, so I do feel like light well, I should say energy and sound together um, create a powerful dynamic duo. And Karen and I actually have sessions that we do uniquely um, that mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else offers like we do. Um, because we Not just, that I know of. You know, we, do, we just found that something told us one day, like, do, the, do what you do and do it together. So Karen and I developed a collaborative session that we don't even really have a name for. It's just a combo session of her sound healing with her forks and my energy healing with my light and crystals. So when we do what we do together, um, we've had some really incredible feedback and powerful experiences happen. So that mm -hmm. could be something for everybody to think about too. And we're not trying to push anybody to do anything, but I always like to say, you know, you don't know what you're missing until you try it. So it's something true. To think and about. Yeah, the, I think the beauty of that too is um, because we're both going back and forth over the layer, the layers, the layers. and the chakras. Yeah, all those layers. Um, you were able to work on multiple layers, whereas in a single session, sometimes it you know takes time. it's yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's pretty amazing what we've discovered, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. And, uh, and Leah says, "I need that." Yeah, I know. <laughs> Absolutely, sister. You get a hold of us. Um, mm -hmm. Lindsay actually has had sessions and that's what she says. I love them. I know Rachel's tuning in. Rachel's had sessions with us. The devil. I think Rachel was, was she the first one we've ever experimented on? Yes. Yes. Rachel was <laughs> the first. She was I remember. <laughs> yeah. So Thank yeah, you, Rachel. I mean, and then my brother, Freddie, like we have done 
we've done sessions together and um, uh, another a new client who um, his name is Jack and he said you know he's an older gentleman and he said that he has really traveled the country um, experiencing uh, different forms various forms of energy healing quantum healing and yeah. um, in his personal experience uh, he said that you know he was incredibly blown away and impressed by the work that we are doing together so just more food for our thoughts for us to continue yes. doing what we do. We gotta, we gotta find a name for these things. So we're available if you're ever interested. But before we go- any questions. Yeah. Before we go into the transmission, um, Karen, is there any lasting words you wanna say anything about what you do or, oh, your appointments and your availability? Yes, um, I am available by appointment in our space in Wilson and Easton. Um, we have a healing sanctuary there. Um, a lot of you have been to our workshops, which is also in that building. Um, and I don't know, do you need me to sound any forks before the light transmission? I got the angels and the veils out. Um, do you need any of that? I think the veils and the angels actually might be beautiful yeah. before I start the vocal toning. And then we will go right into it. Um, but... I'll wait for you to do the, the veils and the, two, and the angels. And then I have a little something that um, was shared on the internet today by a page that I follow. And I thought that it was perfect for today. Now, I cannot take credit for it, but I think that it's perfect for what is you're about to receive. Um, and so I will read that with you, but I just want to say that it is um, by the uh, Keepers of the Light. Uh, or keeper, no, is it? Not the Keepers of the Light, I'm sorry. Keepers of the Diamond codes, kind of oh, diamond light yeah. codes, and mm -hmm. Ulrich Agard, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but that's where I got from. So you go right ahead, and I will follow up with everything. Okay, so we'll start with the angels. Tell me if you can't hear it. These um, clear and raise <clears throat> vibration. Okay. And then we have the veil forks. The veil and, basically lifts the veil. I'm just going to tell everybody when um, you hear the sounds that Karen um, with her forks, just uh, allow yourself to just breathe in the sound. Yes, just breathe the sound, relax. I'm trying to get it so you can hear it. You're all prepared now. I can feel that already. <clears throat> Clear my throat. I feel like it's getting ready because I got this stuff happening over here. Okay, so um, basically, first of all, um, if you are new to my light transmissions, all you have to do is state that you are open to receiving the light code healing and transmissions or activations that I will be um, sending out today for your highest and greatest good only. Okay. If you are not open to receive, that's okay. All you have to say is I'm not open to receiving. You don't have to type it. It's just something that you say to yourself or to your higher self and to your guides. But just know that I always call in for the highest and greatest good of all involved of the collective. And that anything that wishes to come through me today is serving only of the highest and greatest good and comes in divine, unconditional love of the all. Okay. So now... Here's the little bit of information that I have. If you would all like to repeat this back, um, it says, I, and I say Jamie Mendez, so you would say your name. Okay. So I, Jamie Mendez, invoke these highest cosmic key codes of light to pass through every cell, atom, and electron within this form of mine flowing through, filling, and renewing every cell of my mind and body right now to fully enter and anchor into all parts of me. Divine alchemy has occurred. New light codes, the new human templates activated. And so it is. Okay. And just allow yourself to breathe in sounds. 
and just listen to receive. And I'm going to do my best. You know, I've got something going on here with my throat, so I do apologize if you might hear anything that sounds a little unusual. I'm going to do my best, okay? <coughs> and afterwards, I will go right into the light language, okay? Anat ir mashimit ar, uk esh emit irut ayot, uk at ir ak et erot, ur nat yaramar, urat irot ak esh, emet iru nak iru ayot e, murat irot ak esh mit ir, ak esh mit ir, veranat yaru mat iru ak esh yana, iru mat yaru ar, urat ush mit ir, virat ar nak esh mit ir. Ur aria muk ish imit ir nia nak ir. And just take a deep breath in. And release, grounding the energy down and anchoring it into the earth beneath you. Yanat erot ure mat er, uke shimit ir mat ash yimar. Uke shimit ir net yur mat ir, uke er, uke shimit ir mat, bu ar. Ure nat ir mat iu ar ish mit ir. Uk em i arat ayat ir ien uniat ish. Bik er ayat ish nyar in divine love and light. Just breathe in as the codes permanent and move through your biofield through your crown and your soul star, integrating anchor your energy by pushing your root and your earth as far down into the earth as you can and breathe allow these codes to acclimate your energy field to adjust. Thank you. And so be. <sighs> I feel like I'm floating. <laughs> I feel weightless. <laughs> So, That's awesome. Uh, thank you. So um, was everyone able to receive that transmission okay? Were you able to hear it okay? Hopefully it didn't, you know, the, the sound didn't break out or anything. Um, and if you have any feedback or any questions, um, once you regain your bearings, um, please feel free to ask them. We will open up questions for a few moments um, and then we will be wrapping it up as we went a little bit over today.
Ooh, yeah, I know. Maybe can you do that for everybody? Because <laughs> I feel like I'm like, ooh, I felt myself rise. Can you hear it? Oh, you're welcome, Lara. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, MJ. MJ says she heard other voices as well. Yeah, that I didn't just hear one of you. Oof. It sounded like there were numerous. It was amazing, as always. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be able to do it, and I do thank the energies that assist and work through me, as well as my higher self and the Holy Spirit, and deep gratitude and love and love and support for all of you for being here and supporting us. We do these magic hours, and as I share the light transmissions and being here for Karen, and we do greatly thank appreciate you. that. Lynette says, hey, you just froze on my phone for a minute. Oh, too much frequency. Hmm. Was it too much frequency happening? <laughs> Cherry <laughs> says, yes, thank you. Um, Carl says, I heard another voice too in the beginning. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be my guides. So just so that you know, don't freak out anybody. There's nothing. <laughs> this, this space is locked down. Okay. Um, Meredith, hey Meredith, she says at one point the screen went almost red during the transmission. Wow, Ooh. interesting considering it said we're working with those lower chakras too. And um, yeah. my um, specific message for me today was all about my root chakra in particular. Um, and it was really about me um, protecting my root chakra today as um, the energy began to be anchored and as the lower densities began to be removed. So, and it's not just us that that's happening to, it's the planet. So you got to imagine the type of lower densities that are being removed that are kind of trying to, the way that I see it in my head is I literally see them trying to grab, if that makes sense. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, Lynette says, beautiful. Thank you. Laura says, thank you. Very moving. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing the feedback. We love feedback. Um, it helps us to know, you know, what, what helps, what works. Um, and what we should continue to do. So thank you for that. Um, any questions for Karen before we leave and call it a night? And you can always message us at Oracles of the Light if you have any other questions as well. And that's actually where you can um, reach out to set up an appointment with Karen as well, um, or as well as the collaborative sessions that we do together. You can reach out to both of us on Oracles of Light or reach Karen on Oracles of the Light as well as Luna Light Frequencies, which is for Kate. That's her magical me, you know, kind of so we, <laughs> yeah. she's Luna Light Frequencies and how I had magical me, we kind of joined forces there, Oracles of the Light. Yes. Roxana says, amazing. I felt third eye down to feet vibrating. I felt the frequency of your voice, Jamie, like the, and I cannot see the rest of it. It cuts it off. So I will catch that back. And any comments that we may have missed, I'll go back at some point tonight. I always like to look through the comments to see if I missed because sometimes everyone's comments don't show to me. Um, so, oh, you're welcome, Leah. Thank you. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, we thank you all so much for tuning in live with us and being here. Thank you. An incredible experience as always, Karen, your knowledge and what you do. It really does shine through that that is your gift here. So thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. I it was fun. Any other way. You know me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, everybody. So um, I will announce the next magic hour. It will not be next weekend, but possibly the weekend after that. I will announce it as well as the topic and the special guest at that time um, later on. But tomorrow, tune in for Moon Day around 5, excuse me, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your night. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Meredith. Bye.